first of all, as you can see, I'm not so young. So <laughs> I began to work on uh, food uh, history and anthropology many years ago. But my first training was in linguistics and in uh, Chinese lexicography. My PhD, uh, my doctoral dissertation was on uh, a lexicographic issue. And I worked uh, on the co compilation of a Chinese French dictionary during 14 years before uh, beginning to work uh, on food issues. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, I uh, have made a kind of uh, reconversion. I don't know how to say that. Uh, I, I shifted my interests from linguistics to uh, anthropology and history, and I choose the food uh, the food field uh, in China at that time, but it was uh, in the 80s. So you see, many years ago. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, in fact, in the early 80s in France, a new field of research was arising at the University of Vincennes. This university was issued from the uh, 68 movement, student 68 movement. And um, the new field was uh, history of cooking. So uh, there has been a, 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 a great work on uh, history of food in uh, France in the 20 years previously in 20 years uh, before but it uh, it, uh, it was uh, uh, the researchers was uh, in um, quantitative perspective and mainly on nutrition so this new uh, uh, this new field of research that was uh, arising in the 80s uh, treated uh, food, especially on cooking history, culinary treatises history. And so I began to follow uh, uh, the teaching of uh, a French historian, rather well known, Jean-Louis Flandrin, who uh, had uh, who was well known for his work on a history of family and sexuality. But he changed his interests towards uh, uh, cooking history. So in fact, I began uh, like that, uh, studying uh, history of cooking in, the, in France and, and Italy. It was exciting, but for me, it was a kind of hobby because I, I, I go on with my lexicographic work, uh, my compilation uh, of the Chinese French dictionary in a research center on uh, Chinese linguistics at the EHSS, Ecole des Hautes Études en Sciences Sociales uh, in Paris. But uh, in about 83 yes 83 i really changed i really changed my my uh, perspectives and began to work on i wanted to work on uh, uh, chinese food history i thought that i really didn't did not know how to how to proceed uh, I was inspired by the, by the experience at the university by Jean-Louis Flandrin, so it was very fruitful for me. But I thought that I had to go uh, to uh, to Taiwan. It was impossible to go to uh, China uh, for that kind of uh, field work. To uh, to try to find uh, sources sources and also to get a practical uh, knowledge of cooking. Uh, so uh, I was very happy to discover that uh, maybe it will be uh, 
maybe it will be possible to work on uh, Chinese food history. Uh, I got the first issue of a new uh, uh, periodical, a new journal, uh, Chinese cuisine, Dongwo Penren, and other uh, publications. At that time, there was a great enthusiasm in China, in this, uh, in this field, to uh, restore and to uh, revival, to revival uh, uh, Chinese food tradition and cooking, especially cooking, in the in the restaurant circle, in the restaurant, in the in the restaurant milieu. So I was still, I still belong to the the group of. Uh, uh, French historians on uh, food cooking, and I I, uh, I went on uh, doing researches uh, to uh, researches on uh, on uh, French and uh, Italian uh, cuisine, and I organized with some other uh, colleagues uh, banquets of historical cooking. Uh, for some festivities, and then uh, at, in uh, 1990, about 1990, and the years after, uh, I I published three books on these uh, ancient cooking in French and in France and Italy with uh, Silvano Cervanti, and then I, I stopped. Uh, doing banquet <laughs> because it was very tiring and it was a good experience, but enough. Was there any in, uh, personal interest involved in that kind of um, transition? And you talked about how you went to Taiwan uh, in, a, uh, in addition to collecting ancient texts on cooking and culinary tradition. You also went to culinary school to learn how to cook. And uh, was that um, uh, driven by your research interest or your general hobby in, in cooking? Uh, it was driven, of course, by, by my personal interest for cooking, but also because I wanted to be, very, to be serious in studying a uh, history of cooking. And I thought that it was absolutely necessary to understand how to make, how to mm -hmm. make, uh, because I, I felt that I would not understand anything if I did not know how to cook. Uh, because of course I, I knew how to cook uh, French or, or Italian uh, uh, food, but not so well, in fact. But <laughs> I, I, I presumed that I knew at that time I was young, a rather pretentious <laughs> lady. No, but uh, uh, I, I knew that I knew nothing uh, about Chinese cuisine and that it, it was very uh, different from what, uh, 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 to, from what uh, I knew already. So that was very important for me. And then, uh, in fact, uh, my interest was a, a subject of, uh, how to say, uh, uh, kind of disdain. Uh, by my my colleagues, they did not think it was very serious, and they thought that I was an original person. So sometimes when I met them, they asked me, "Hey, Françoise, are you still uh, studying uh, cooking?" But I did not care because I thought that it was really a very important field and very interesting to. Uh, to discover, because I got the impression that almost nothing has be, had been done. It's not true, because of course there was the very important food by Kasei Chang, food in Chinese culture. And afterwards I discovered that there were some uh, very important stu studies made in Japan by Shinoda Osamu, uh, uh, Aoki Masaru and other people. But, uh, uh, for example, in France, nobody except me was working on that uh, topic, and except uh, uh, Eugene Anderson, uh, 
and uh, Naomichi Ishige and Huang Zongxin in Cambridge. There were almost nobody working on that uh, matter. And I must say that I was always supported by Eugene Anderson. Uh, sometimes I did not agree with him, with uh, his uh, way of interpreting uh, some text, but that's uh, interesting. We had to discuss and we uh, got this opportunity uh, in the, uh, at the sixth uh, conference on, uh, on uh, history of techniques at Cambridge in 1990. My research on the cooking procedures in the medieval texts, French medieval texts, inspired me a lot to, uh, to write something, an article on the same, the same topic uh, in China. And at that time, I thought that uh, if, uh, uh, and uh, I agree with Jean-Louis, and Jean-Louis Flandrin agreed with me, that if we wanted to give, uh, to say, credit to this field of study, we had to publish in very well-known and respected uh, journals, academic journals. So, so this first article on uh, a study of the cooking procedures in Chinese uh, cooking was published in the most uh, important, most respected uh, uh, history journal, journal of history in France, Les Annales, uh, from the Annales School in 83, but it does not change anything. <laughs> Cooking was not philosophy, so you see. <laughs> when you started off with uh, doing research, you mentioned like the, the disdain or disrespect from your colleagues, and also the difficult in getting access to to the um to the text to the ancient text. Um, I wonder if, in addition to that, or or among them, what was the biggest challenge you faced? And uh, what was the opportunities there you, that you seized? In fact, uh, uh, I was not so discouraged by this kind of, of disdain. It does not matter. It did not matter for <laughs> me. Of course, I would like to have some people with room to exchange on my work. But uh, we were a few, uh, happy few, I, I think happy few. Uh, uh, and we could exchange or to, because, uh, for example, I had uh, good interac interactions with uh, Eugene Anderson and also Huang Xinzong and uh, my Japanese colleagues too. And at that time, also the people, the researchers and the scholars I met uh, 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 through my, my <coughs> travel in China in, the, uh, in uh, 80. So uh, it, it was okay. Uh, but of course, I would have liked to have a better understanding of my way of work, because really, that, that what is very interesting in that is that no people uh, were interested. They were not interested, even uh, to read my articles. No, no one uh, wanted to read this kind of uh, topics because it was not in fashion, it was not, uh, and they were into, they had a lot of work uh, for their uh, own researchers and they were very busy, busy in that. So they did not work, want to distract themselves. Of course, some colleagues, some elder colleagues were interested. Some uh, uh, elder colleagues were interested and, and rather uh, encouraging. Uh, I must say. Do you have anticipated that it was like 
the few studies is going to lead to a prosperity, as we call it today. I don't think I anticipated it. I followed my my taste for this kind of researches, <laughs> but you know, I was not at all um, how to say. I was rather timid in my way, uh, no great confidence uh, in myself. But nevertheless, on another uh, aspect, another aspect of my personality ha had a great confidence. It's, it's. Uh, um, I don't know how how to, how to explain that, and I never thought about that. Uh, mm. In my life, I just wanted when I was young. I just wanted to have a profession where I could read the day long. So I got that in doing uh, the dictionary uh, work. I had to to read uh, all the day long to to compile this dictionary. And then another uh, another desire was to be able to have the occasion, the opportunity to have good connections with Italy because I, I loved Italy. So I got this opportunity uh, because after having written this article in the Annal on the cooking procedures, uh, a, uh, uh, an Italian colleague uh, contacted me and asked me if I wanted to be part of a, um, a jury uh, in Italy to give um, to give a prize to uh, research on food on food that was in ninety one so uh, from that time on I participated to the Italian also Italian food uh, circles and at that time it was in the Piedmont in uh, and the uh, slow food has just began to to uh, to, to to work. Uh, of course, uh, I knew uh, Carlo Petrini, the founder of Slow Food, and we were very well all together and uh, discussing, discussing, debating. Um, because at that time, he did not know what to do. Uh, the slow food founder Carlo Petrini did not know at all what he wanted to do exactly and very uh, slowly uh, he began he, he, he invented the slow food movement but it is also because we were all with he with him and his uh, group every year we had a discussion on the way to go on on that uh, subject, on that topic of food. So that was very interesting. And before that, I had other opportunities to uh, organize also uh, historical banquets in Italy. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. so, um, <laughs> that must be fun. Yes, uh, that was funny. I love that. So oh. uh, it was OK for me. <laughs> That's great. Um, yeah, that's uh, like I didn't know that you were part of the um, the, the the slow food movement. It sounded like um, you collaborated, you co-produced the, the whole thing. Uh, that 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 sort of changed the world in a bit. You know, that's yes, amazing. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that, that's, that that's changed wonderful. the world. Yes, in a way. Yes, yeah, definitely. Because, yeah. Yes, that's very funny because at the beginning, Carlo Petrini, who was a communist originally he was a <laughs> communist mm. and he always and so he gave some uh, little conferences uh, in italy to a very how to say a small circle he was very popular in a small circle in his province and mm. every time he gave uh, uh, this kind of conference uh, addressed to uh, entrepreneur, uh, how to say, yes, entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs, yeah. Yes, because he wanted to get uh, funds to mm -hmm. uh, finance <laughs> his, uh, his uh, movement. He always wear, <laughs> always wore a red pullover. 
to, to, to indicate that he was still communist. 